We start off by adding the drive into the hardware tree with the generic Ethernet driver. We're going to use single words, give it a name. This will be the name that the data structures get created under for your controller tags. These are the standard input to instance numbers. Six words in. Six words out, no configuration words, give it the IP address of the drive that you've set. Multicast, whatever update time works well for your application. Now the data structure will show up here under the name that you gave it. The inputs, the outputs, the control. We won't be using anything under the control. Next we will be inputting the uh, add-on instruction block. So we import it. For some reason, this takes a little while to pull up the dialog box. This is the name of the block. You import it. That's what it's going to import. Now we create the block and the associated data types. These data types are defined so that you don't have to deal with just raw data with no names. Now you can actually see the control word with human readable names, the control data structure, the status data structure, status word. Next, we'll create a program. I'll do this one in ladder, but you can also do it in your um, function charts. Just depends on what you like, or even structured text. And you go over to your add-on instruction blocks. A new block will appear here. You drag it and drop it into the main ladder program. Now you need to give it a unique block name. Create that variable. Now, for the individual control blocks, you can give it all your start stops 
and other variables. I'll make up some simple variables here. Now these names are very generic. Of course you give names that were more specific uh, probably to your process. Now you have to pass the generic structure that is made by the generic IP block, hardware block, to this block. Input data, six words. Output data. Integer six words. Everything is good. Save it. Now, that's all you have to do to get the drive set up for the communications. Next, we need to set a few parameters in the block for scaling. The scaling values can be found in the drive itself if you don't know what they were. So we scale what the maximum RPM is, what the maximum current was. I'm just using some basic values here. Now, when the drive is at 100% of any of these values, these will be the real values shown on the output of this block. Now, you have a fully functional block to the drive and you'd simply write your code to trigger the starts, the e-stops, the quick stops, resets, just like you would with any drive. This is just a quick screenshot of what the block looks like when it's running with the real drive. This is the drive status bits shown as all the bits and the command as all the bits of course, these are the same as the ones that are brought out 
is these bits. But this allows you to see the whole world word is one. The outputs are displayed here. And of course you can use these just as you would any place you want in the program as any block that has outputs like that. Example. Here's a block name. That is simply the name that you made up to give the block. So all the variables start off with the block name. And then the dot convention faulted. That's the bit that the drive is faulted. And I just have another bit that I put in to send a uh, variable off to uh, another display unit. In your program, of course, you could you can use this. And normally you would um, for most of your programming. And as you can see, here's the other bits brought out for display for the purposes of this video. Now don't forget to use the uh, get system variables like you should do, do with any I.O. in an Allen Bradley to confirm that the module is actually online. Here I'm actually setting a few command bits. You can always get to bits that aren't exposed by the block by simply using the block name and then the bit name or the variable. What's this button?